Okay, uh, we're back with the Spears and Munsell disc. Um, looking at Dolby Atmos uh, setup today. Um, trims, uh, channel levels, uh, and that type of thing. Uh, and what I do to get um, Dolby Atmos and surround sound uh, sounding really as good as it can. Because uh, balance is everything. Um, and I don't think just measuring 75 dB in each channel is uh, offers the best sound. Um, it may measure that way, but um, there's a few techniques that uh, this disc and other discs like um, Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit by Technodad and Joe and Tell um, that I think are necessary to take your system uh, beyond just measuring 75 dB for each channel. Um, because we all have different rooms and the things in those rooms uh, influence the sound in different ways. Uh, like for me, I have a high couch and um, getting the surround sound volume and essentially rear Atmos volume correct is, um, it's been difficult over the years to try and figure out systems in my mind uh, which um, you know, make it so surround sound feels really, or sounds really good. So, um, I mean, one thing as well, I've always been into like movie theatres and things like that, and I've always thought, well, their surround sound is so much louder than ours. Um, I've got mine measured up and everything set up to 75 dB. Why is that? Um, and, uh, well, um, yeah, let's just go through it and uh, we'll see how I set it up, basically, uh, to get that type of surround sound um, and something that, that sounds really good. Uh, I might be bouncing around a little bit here, um, but the basic layout of this is going to be, um, I've split it almost into three parts, and that is getting a near field uh, measurement um, for just to make sure that every single speaker is output in the same like voltage, you could say, uh, but just generally the same sound. Um, if one speaker is way out, then I can detect it early on um, and balance that out. Um, next one is, is essentially calibrating everything um, in uh, the main listening position. And then after that, it's listening tests. Um, and the listening tests are really the most, uh, pretty much the, for me, the most important uh, now. And again, having access to discs like this and the Joe and Tell um, Technodad discs um, take your sound, in my opinion, to a different level. And it's because the listening tests are just so important for surround for the surround sound portion of this. You need to see how sound moves from the front to the rear. And um, mics don't seem to get that uh, very well, or um, you, I don't know, you just need to listen uh, with your ears, uh, I, I just feel, with that. Since doing it, it, it sounds incredible, so, well, let's get into it, uh, just really quick. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, just getting a near field measurement. Uh, these are not plastic, by the way. Uh, they won't push in and damage the tweeter. These are like metal cones. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's no issues here. Um, what is the goal here? The goal here is to absolute near field uh, measure 75 dB each channel, right? So I did this to every single channel. Um, obviously, before this, uh, I, I need to back up a little. Um, the trims on your input should be zero and the test tones on the receiver should be zero because there's two ways to control um, channel volume or uh, yeah, channel trims um, and that is with the test tones on the actual receiver section itself which are global, they affect every single input and then there's input based ones which only affect that input. So. You need to really get everything, well, you should get everything to zero. Everything should just be zero, flat, uh, and everything like that, just to get um, an idea of what's happening with the speakers. 
Um, now this is my right speaker here and um, if anything versus my left speaker, same speaker, uh, this speaker measures slightly bright um, and I've measured it, uh, I've actually measured it with REW and it is slightly brighter. Now there's things I can do to um, change this. Um, I could EQ just this speaker if I wanted to. Uh, I could probably put some type of uh, curve onto it just to gradually lower that. I haven't done that. Um, I haven't done that, but um, you can't. You know, there's there's a, there's a lot of things you can do um, nowadays. So um, I use um, Multi EQX app, which is an Odyssey app, um, which means I can manually I can do everything manual. So I measure everything with REW import all of my things, uh, my measurements, and uh, you know, I can do it that way. Uh, but yeah, so uh, goal number one for me is I must get every single speaker completely 75 dB uh, right from the start. Now this goes into, um, well let's just see what that looks like as well in REW and how I do it. I don't use an SPL meter and the reason I don't is because it's still not slowing up uh, enough for me. Um, you can see um, you know the sound bouncing around from 74 dB maybe even clipping to 76 and then 75 and I, I want more a little bit more consistency to that so what I do is use an RTA uh, window basically. Um, I first got onto this actually um, from Joe, Joe from Joe and Tell and uh, he started measuring his speakers uh, using this method. Um, one day I thought well I'm actually just gonna measure my speakers this way as well uh, and it sounded I got I finally got my center speaker sounding correct absolutely balanced as it should be uh, with an RTA so I personally recommend it this is with a free program it's called REW so um, yeah I think it's very good so it brings up this screen and uh, the top corner here you have a record right so I put the Spears and Munsell disc in I put the left channel in or whatever channel I, I may be doing at the time and once the um, once it's started to play the test tone, I, I basically I hold my microphone and I press record, and um, this is what it gives out. Now um, there's a couple of things that you can see from this. Uh, averages is I think these I think these go up every like second or half a second. Uh, I'm not really too sure. But um, 177 averages is way overkill. Um, you, you don't need to do that. Um, I think you can understand the volume of a speaker in probably around 25 to 30. Um, but uh, the more averages you get, the more potential accuracy you actually have. So, um, so this is the pink noise from uh, the Spears and Muntle disc. Uh, it's peaking around 1k. Um, I think it starts at 500 around here, uh, the pink noise does, and I think it ends around here. I'll show you in a second. But yeah, that's that's what the limited pink noise is. And the reason for this is because you don't want to be measuring a speaker here because it, bass, bass volume is just not, not something you want to measure. You want to measure pink noise up here um, it, there's less interactions um, with the reflections. Um, you know, you're not measuring the tweeter, not necessarily. It's all mid-range stuff. Another thing as well, it's just easy for the speaker to do, to measure this volume of sound. This this is the volume of sound that you want to have correct. So I think this is why limited pink noise or pink noise in general is the the best way to use or the best way to do. I've seen some full range uh, pink noise before and uh, I couldn't I couldn't get it to work correctly because the volume just wasn't correct 
So limited is is definitely the way to go. And uh, doing it doing this method, what I do is um, I get it as close to the lowest portion of 75 dB as I can. This was 75.26. If I went one click under in volume, it would measure 74. Uh, 0.86 dB or something like that, right? So this point here for me was the exact point where we started now measuring 75 on an average and it was the lowest point. And the reason I do that is because um, not so much with the near field, um, but when we get into the actual measurements and things like that, I need to make sure that the center speaker is always absolutely above this number um, because if you've been um, you know watching movies for a long time with surround sound systems dialogue is extremely important but I don't want to put my center channel 2 dB above uh, everything else but I want it to absolute I absolutely must know that it's above this I think my center channel when I measured it in the main listening position was 75.53 something like that so in my mind I'm like okay as long as it is above my reference volume I never want it to be below this like there's certain speakers that I never want to be below this number and that is my center speaker and every single speaker that is behind me. Every single speaker that is behind me, I make sure I'm above this number. Um, with the center channel, obviously, yeah, above. Uh, the right channel uh, as well, I try and, I try and not touch um, if I can uh, because you know it's at the front. You can really hear the volume differences when a speaker is facing you. Um, so I tend uh, not to change the volumes on, on those. On those I have done before, and it's because my right channel is slightly brighter. I was trying to bring it down like half a dB. Um, I don't. Again, I don't think that's the right thing to do. And I've measured it. I measured it this way now, and it went down to 74 by one click. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm just not going to do that. So um, the volume is uh, set up, in my opinion, where it should be. So, but yeah, this is what it looks like in REW. Uh, for me, I get better results doing this way versus the SPL way, like just measuring with an SPL meter or, or something like that. Getting all of these averages together, it's just for me, a, 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 from my experience, it's provided me with much more accuracy and when I say accuracy, I mean when I watch a movie, everything sounds balanced. Um, it sounds, it sounds proper. It sounds, it just sounds uh, set up as I want it to be set up. Whereas the SPL way, I could be half a dB here and there on certain certain things. With this way, I can be a lot more absolute. So, um, <clears throat> so right. So this is a Denon receiver, an X6500H. Uh, and what you do is you go into the manual setup, uh, you go into levels, and you go into start test tone, right? Now we're not using these test tones, but um, it comes, you can still um, use these. So what I do is, um, <clears throat> these are the results that I had. Um, I go around for every single speaker near field, and I measure everything, right? The center speaker was actually measuring slightly uh, louder than, than these. Um, and the reason I want to get these more, a, a good baseline here, is because um, this, the, the test tone section, these, this affects everything on a global scale, well, you could say. <laughs> um, so any input you go, the, these are still in effect. It doesn't matter what input you're on. Um, so I want to get a good baseline here. I want to make sure everything is outputting the same thing. Um, now, the rears, again, they're slightly hotter. And one thing I noticed is, um, the uh, what is this, the left back, so it's this one. 
I've always noticed that uh, these back surrounds are louder than these. Um, and when you do a near field like this, you can you can you can see it. Um, so yeah, uh, again, the the whole point here is to make sure all of everything is outputting the same thing. So uh, that was really my first goal before I even start measuring in my main listen, listen, listening position. And as well, let's just say I wanted to remeasure or anything like that. Um, and I set everything to zero, I would keep these the same beca because the reason is, is because again, this is now set up all of the time. Um, my rears are no longer louder than, than uh, or my back surrounds are no longer louder than my left and right surround sound speakers. You know, um, they're actually set up volume wise correctly now. So um, I've, all, I've really always wanted to do this and uh, I just think it's a much easier way of doing it. Now, um, there are some things uh, now that I want to show you that, like I've left these at zero dB and there is a reason why. Um, in the ampersign section, uh, I'm sure most receivers uh, that are not Denon are very similar to this. You can choose your layouts, right? So um, I use an Oro 3D layout and um, the reason this is like important is because it's putting the speakers not on the ceiling but at the very top of the wall, right? What the receiver does here is it adjusts for different for the volume of that. Um, I near field measured every single speaker, got it to 75 dB. So I near field measured the Atmos speakers and um, it measured 77 or 77 and a half or around there. <clears throat> so why is this? Well, it's in this position with this layout, um, they've allowed for 2 dB. Uh, 2 dB should give you exactly what the left speaker is giving you in this seat. And to be honest, it's about right. Now, if I change my layout to a ceiling layout, like having my speakers actually in my ceilings, uh, the volume level is different there than it is here. Um, I'm not 100% sure, so maybe don't quote me on this, but when you're in the ceiling, the volume levels are actually a bit more balanced um, for what this, this should be, um, I think. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. All I will tell you is the different layouts affect the volume of these speakers. And I think this is what it is, is you need the correct layout here uh, to where the volume of each speaker is, is as, it, as it should be. If you have a um, in-ceiling layout, then use the layout that they show you here to give the, the ceiling layout because the volume, it's really just a volume scale. Um, and again, in this configuration, the Oro 3D configuration, which is what I'm using, it allows for about two to two and a half dB. And when you measure in here, in your main listen position, the volume is about correct. So um, going back to this, this is why I kept these at zero, uh, because this system is accounting for the volume differences of the speakers being higher than um, obviously the ground level and the angle the, you know, this, this angle um, coming down here, the volume of the receiver or the setup, the layout of the receiver is actually accounting for all of this. Um, so yeah, what it did was is I measured um, whatever the left one was, I think it was 77 and a half, right? So two, two to two and a half dB um, or 2.5 uh, dB. And I used that now as my reference volume for all of the Atmos speakers, and they were all the same. They all measured 77.5. So that's how I did that. Now, again, once this is now set up, this test tone area, now again, I'm not using the test tones on the receiver. I'm just coming in here, uh, say lowering the center speaker, negative 0.5. I'm coming out of this, now because a, te a test tone does play right 
for the when you come into this. But I make the adjustments, uh, back out, and once you back out, you now hear the Spears and Munsell uh, test tone from, say, the center channel. I press record again on REW, and now I read 75 uh, dB instead of 76 point whatever it was. Um, right, and I do this to every single speaker. Right, this gives me a good baseline of um, for later, um, and I'll explain later why I'm doing this. But basic, basically, why I'm doing this is I can now treat this left surround. Um, uh, sorry, sorry. This left surround and this right surround as a pair. Why? Because I know that they're output in the same volume as each other now. So if I need to increase this by 3 dB, then I'm going to increase this by 3 dB as well. Um, and that is uh, that is the way I've done it this, this time around. Last time around I actually didn't do this. Um, but I think this way is better because I know that this back surround, these two back surrounds here, because they've been set up near field to be exactly the same volume, I can treat them as a pair in volume. So if I measure this speaker and um, it needs, I don't know, 2 dB, I know this one does, does as well. And the reason now I'm doing this um, together, almost like you treat them as a pair, is because my room is, um, you know, it's an oblong room. It's um, essentially a complete, well, not 100% square room, but it's, you know, it's a square room where um, it's equal on each side. There's no curves or anything like that. And I've done this before where I've measured, say, a left surround and a right surround um, and they were measuring different volumes and I've made adjustments and I've always felt that, that that adjustment in volume, I can hear one over the other. Now again, I'm measuring it at 75 dB, but I hear it with my own ears that the, there's volume differences there. Now there isn't. Now there's no volume difference between these two because I've corrected for it already right, in this section of it, doing a near field for every single speaker. Uh, the only speaker I don't do this for is the subwoofer, because um, you don't measure subwoofers that way, uh, near field, in my opinion. Um, though I have, actually, that's an, that's an interesting point, I have done that. Um, measured near field on one speaker and near field on the other, just to make sure they are the same volume. Uh, pre-calibrated um, but I this for me this um, calibration here wasn't about my subwoofers um, I've done those before um, and I always reference it to my left speaker here so um, I measure 75 dB in my main listening position on this speaker right on my left speaker once I've got my 75 dB there I then just go to the test tones for the subwoofer um, and now I measure my subwoofer. I like to get my subwoofer just pinching into 76 uh, dB. Uh, that's just something I like um, doing it this way. It sounds really good. So um, let's see where we're at. Um, okay. Yeah, so this is all the near field stuff, right? This is so far, this is just all near field. Um, and getting that balanced. And again, the uh, the Atmos speakers will be louder. Um, they would definitely be louder. Um, but I would don't I would not adjust for this because again, this layout is is actually helping you by by doing this. It's already pre-done for you essentially. So I again, I left it at zero and I made sure they all measured the same and they did. So um, yeah. All right, so now onto the disc, and now we're really going to get into... So that's all been set up, right? Everything near field, everything's putting out the same volume. Um, now what we do is really we uh, we take a look at the disc and uh, uh, what's really, really going on. Now I was using the disc um, for the near field, but I'm just showing you the menus now. 
Um, yeah, so my layout is a 7.1 layout and I have four, four uh, top layers and we're using uh, Dolby Atmos uh, for this. So uh, this is a picture of when you, once you go down into the audio section and you can adjust um, the, the levels here and it's split up into base layer and top layer. Um, I guess it was easier to split them up um, from the image, um, the, the images that they provide. I, I guess it was just easier this way uh, to do this. Now uh, the pink noise is 500 hertz to 2k. So um, again, sorry my phone's going off. Um, let's put that. Uh, sorry. Um, so yeah, 500 hertz to, to 2k. Now the reason, again, this is important because um, let's say again with mine, if you have a slightly bright speaker, it doesn't really influence this because it's in that central woofer uh, area, really. Uh, negative th uh, 30 dBFS, which is full scale, is so far away from clipping um, as well, it's ridiculous in volume. Um, 0 dB is right on the edge of loudness. We're negative 30 away from that. So this pink noise is not loud. Um, but what this pink noise is designed to do is to um, increase your volume in the main listening position and measure uh, and set your receiver to 0, then measure 75 dB. I don't do that. Um, I just don't do it that way. Um, it, I wouldn't actually want to do it that way. Um, I just, I'm not really sure I see the point in doing that. So, um, but uh, as well, the pink, the pink noise from the subwoofer uh, for the LFE channel is negative 40 dBFS. Now this is 10 dB lower in volume than the other channels. And the reason is, is because uh, the subwoofer channel allows t uh, 10 dB of headroom for like huge explosions and massive dynamics and things like that. Now, if you've ever tried to set your uh, levels up with R programs like REW, um, the LFE channel does not take this into account. At least I don't believe it does. Uh, last time I checked, it it, it was just straight up not doing this. It was measuring the volume of the, of the channels to be the same as the subwoofer. And I was like, well, you can't do that. So this is why you will always need a disc or you need like proper test tones and things like that to make sure the volume uh, level on these discs, uh, you know, on your home theater is correct. So, uh, but yeah, the base layer, okay. So I put a video out, I made a video for this one. Um, so yeah, um, we just get into, uh, the, this is the base layer uh, and it's showing you all the speakers here. Um, I know my camera's here, but um, you know, there is a speaker, one's one of the speakers down here um, the, for the back surrounds and then you've got the uh, right surround and left surround and you just go around you can and you this isn't uh, locked it this isn't this doesn't pan around like this uh, you can leave it in this channel for, for the entire time if you want uh, the tracks are about 30 seconds to a minute long then it uh, repeats and it just keeps repeating until you you actually move it which is really nice so So now it's in the subwoofer. You might not be able to hear that, especially on YouTube, but um, I can just hear it. And yeah. So now, now we're doing the center, you know, and you could, you just go around all of the channels and you, you essentially now, you everything's in the main listening position and you want to be measuring 75 dB, right? 
and I'm using a different uh, method with the RTA uh, just getting more averages because um, again with with more averages it removes uh, some of those peaks uh, that you get and uh, lulls so I, I just prefer to have a bit more averages and I think I get better sound from doing that so um, so yeah now there's the top layer And same thing with the top layer. Um, you know, we get uh, the sound coming out of here. You measure your 75 dB. You might have to go back, uh, back and forth a few times and things like that. Um, I, ge I generally do. And uh, yeah. Now we go to the next channel. Yeah, and you just measure everything 75 dB. Uh, they even have instructions here on like you know how to um, how to set it up, uh, what you should be looking for, uh, and things like that. Um, now, what I do is that they're saying here as well about um, you know put put your receiver in reference. Uh, what I do is I increase the volume until I read 75 dB. Um, so I don't use the, the, the reference way of, of doing this. Um, so um, I don't think I've ever done it that way. So, uh, but they said if you, it says here, if you don't have a reference mark, um, use the volume control until the left speaker measures 75 dB. And that's what I do. I use that method instead. So um, yeah, um, so. Um, now, there are a couple of ways um, of doing this, um, and I want to explain to you some of the thoughts that I've had um, um, about measuring in different ways. Um, so I've took the cushions off, uh, I, I typically have cushions here. Now um, what you could do, is what I actually did this time, was measure um, with zero, this would be zero degrees, right? And zero degrees is uh, my microphone is pointing at my left speaker. And then when I came to measure my center speaker in the middle here, it was pointing directly at the uh, speaker. Um, I just thought, hey, I'm going to try measuring it this way this time. And uh, I felt it gave really good results. Now, the only bit of downside to this is um, you would actually have to. Uh, which I did anyway, um, but you, you have to measure your subwoofer in a different way. You can't measure your subwoofer like this because um, sub sound is more, um, it's coming, it's really coming and bouncing from everywhere, right? To get to your listening position. So pointing this directly at a subwoofer and that to measure that is not a good idea and I wouldn't advise that. This is kind of why I calibrate my subwoofer like separately. Whenever I do anything anyway, I always calibrate my subwoofers and that uh, separately. Never really do them in the same measurement. Uh, you can, um, but um, there's a couple of things I want to show you as well as to why I was kind of leaning towards why don't I point my uh, measuring device microphone here, the U mic one, at the speaker itself, um, and there's a there is a good reason for that. So um, <clears throat> so this is the mic, right? Uh, this is at not now 90 degrees, right? I've on REW I've put my um, 90 degree um, calibration file in, and one thing you'll notice is the all of the ground plane speakers, you could say, are all going to be 90 degree measurements, right? They're all flat lined. I mean, the, the rears are slightly higher and things, you know, but, but everything is, is on the ground level. And this is what 90 degree looks like. Now, the problem is, is that I've found this and uh, I'll explain in a minute why, is the, the angle of my, this, is, this would be my Atmos speaker up here, right? 
the the angle of this is now not 90 this is not 90 degree right the the angle is different and um, I ran into this when calibrating my speakers um, I actually measured them both one was at 90 degree I used the 90 degree um, uh, calibration file um, with 90 degrees and I measured it and then what I did was is I moved the microphone right and now this this resent there's an angle here right so this now resembles this kind of 90 degree sound so I measured that in REW and the measurement was different it was less bright um, so basically this way of measuring uh, collects more treble information and this way is collecting treble information as it would these speakers when when this was straight at 90 degrees and this is something I picked up on in um, when I was calibrating and EQing my speakers I was like the measurements are different um, because I calibrated, I've, I've calibrated my speakers a, a lot, right? Way over ten times, uh, because I went in from really not knowing anything. Um, I was calibrating my subwoofers and that for years, but I'd never EQ'd a full range speaker before, and there was just things and that I was picking up on, and I noticed that changing this uh, angle, these degrees, um, smoothed out my treble. And the problem is, is when you measure, um, with e especially with EQs, if you're measuring brighter than you actually are or, or aren't, when you go to EQ it, the EQ can pull out all of that treble. Let's just say I'm gaining 3 dB, it wouldn't be 3 dB, it would be, it'd be more like 1 dB of extra treble measuring this way because of the angle here might be 1 dB right well when I come to EQ I have to now I e, I'm EQing that extra treble that I'm measuring here out of the system and I notice that my Atmos speakers didn't have that um, clarity that my other speakers did and I think it was because of this so what I did is I remeasured my Atmos speakers, I set everything back to zero, I deleted all the EQs, measured this way, and the treble was more balanced, and I had to do less EQ work on my high end to get the correct results, and now they sound as they, in my opinion, as they should. Uh, they don't sound so muffled anymore. They sound, uh, you know, they've got that clarity about them again, like the like the rest of the speakers do very small now um, just really quick again I know I'm, I'm kind of jumping on this a lot but um, measuring EQ measuring your channel levels um, in this way um, from what I've from what I've seen it can put um, about half a dB extra onto the measurements of your Atmos speakers measuring this way just straight up that's what I've seen. If you went and measured it that way, like as it as it is, you you now measure less volume because you, you're not going direct. I know we're not directly into the mic, but you're like 45 degree di almost directly into the mic, and uh, this it, it changes volume. Again, it's only by half a dB. And my third step um, at the end of this is what I'll show you. This really doesn't matter. You could just measure your whole system, um, pointing, uh, pointing it straight up, and it's fine. Because the third layer of this is now what these discs have is listening tests. You know, anyway. Um, so if I was one uh, half a dB or even one dB out on these Atmos speakers, it's not. It's not a big deal, right? But I'm just making you aware that there are differences between having a mic pointing directly up in, in this ceiling here to having a, an actual 90 degree measurement uh, this way. So, uh, and in, with EQ it definitely makes a difference. And it, ma and it makes about half a dB difference uh, like this. 
Now, if your speakers are actually in the ceiling, then, you know, <laughs> that's basically turning into a, a zero degree measurement. You know, you've lost 90 degrees entirely. If they're in the ceiling, then I don't think you could EQ it this way. Like, let's just say you wanted to EQ and measure that way. I just don't think you could do it that way. I think you would actually have to use a different calibration file, uh, the zero degree one. So, yeah, I, I don't know how... I haven't measured speakers in the ceiling like this, so I, I've never really... I don't have any experience with it. But, um, yeah, I'm just discussing this because it can make a difference um, speakers being 90 degrees versus 45 degrees or speakers being in the ceiling uh, it can make a difference so it's just something to consider and uh, yeah this time around I um, I measured it this way and I didn't measure my subwoofers um, but I measured all my speakers directly like what is directly coming out of the speaker and I think it was good it, it, well it sounds perfect so I'm happy with that now I just wanted to take a picture of what my cushions are like um, my I mean for me my cushions are huge like my I'm resting my head here right uh, so uh, you know, you can you can kind of almost get suffocated by these cushions, and this is really why I've I, I guess you could say I've had a, some issues with my surround sound volume and actually getting it correct. Uh, that the EQ, the the volume uh, the SPL just wasn't able to to get. Um, now if anything, uh, from what I've learned over the years cushions depending on how big they are but my cushions tend to add um, or I would require after listening tests around two and a half dB extra volume because just because of this right I mean I was measuring here without the cushions then when you put the cushions in that has to be now some type of consideration um, if you ex if you you have the same thing where well, you remove your cushions for all of the, the work that needs to be done, and I think it should. I've done both, and I actually do think you get more accuracy just removing the cushions and adding the gain later, so to speak. Adding those channel trim, uh, you know, increases like, say, 2.5 dB later. So, luckily though, I didn't have to, like, just make a number up like 2.5 dB. Um, there are... Um, some advanced things in the panning section that we can actually now figure out what the volume like really it's, it, it really is. So yeah, this is just um, this is just some other things on the desk. Uh, there's base management. Uh, this is um, some filtered pink noise between 30 hertz and 50, and uh, really the goal is is here is to get the sub. Uh, volume that would normally come from the left speaker um, to be the same as the subwoofer volume uh, that you measured from your LFE channel. Um, I uh, I roll my speakers off at 80 hertz, and every single house that I've been in, um, I think 80 hertz is the best. Uh, my last house was wide. Um, you know, this house is not wide. Uh, this is a, I guess you could say, really say a thin room, a thinner room. And 80 hertz, in my opinion, just provides the best. There, you could go to 90. I, I've seen uh, people go in 90. I've used 90 before. Uh, but just the way I've now got everything set up, EQ'd and everything like that, for me, 80 hertz is, is where it's at, right? When um, I measure this, it says here to now get your levels within 3 dB of the uh, LFE channel. Mine were. Um, that's a good sign. So uh, yeah, and it sounds you know it sounds really deep bass when they play it when you play this tone. So yeah. Um, all right. So now we get onto the panning section, and uh, this this is where the disc really really it's a game changer 
in my opinion. You know, we're now done with measuring everything at 75 dB in every every single channel. Whichever way we've done it, either pointing forward or or having the pointing up in the air, uh, for the most part, doesn't really matter as long as everything was measuring 75 dB. Uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, base layer, right? So I just re recorded this really quick just to show you what it does. Um, So the circle is uh, moving here and it's just indicating where the sound is, right? And uh, the goal now is is calibration essentially has been done. We're getting into like listening tests now, right? When this sound goes from my left speaker to the center, is the volume the same? Oh, I don't care now whether I have to change things. What matters to me is what I hear with my ears in my listening position. Is the volume the same? Lucky, luckily, it is the same. Uh, the, the volume of both channels is exactly the same. And again, with, with this channel, uh, the right channel that it's going into now. Is it the same volume? So I go back and forward on this, right? I, pl I make sure that my front sound stage is exactly as I want it. And um, I didn't have to change it um, at all. Uh, there's a few things that I know. Again, my right speaker is slightly brighter than my, than my left uh, and things like that. I know that. So I'm kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I can, you can just hear it, but, I, but I'm okay with it. Um, that's fine. Now, the big thing with this is, uh, as I've been try really trying to say here, is the volume now of when any, any sound moves from the front to the back. Um, our ears are pointing forward and uh, we hear sounds much better in front of us. It's just that simple. Um, placing sound um, above you and around you, um, it's a lot more difficult to like, kind of like ascertain as to where it actually is. But when a sound is in front of you, I you know exactly where it is, right? You know, you can really, really hear where that sound is. So when things go behind me, I must, I, I have to know, I must know, I, I don't move on to another speaker until I know that this sound coming around here is exactly the same volume as the front, right? Um, yeah. So my sound came around the side here and into the right uh, right back surround, well, it's not the back surround, it's the right surround speaker. The first thing I noticed was a volume difference. It just went lower, right? And again, I'm in my main listening position, it went lower. So I went on my um, uh, channel trims um, on the input. Yeah, again, we've, we've already done with the other test tones on the actual input itself, and I raised um, the back right surround by one dB, because I thought, mm, so probably about one dB, and I just played it again. I, I redid it again, I re rewound it. I was like, better, but it's still low. So I kept on doing it, kept on doing it, and it took me about three times to, to get it, and the difference again was about two and a half, two and a half to three dB, right? That was the difference in volume. So once I got it correct, I, I again I, I played this, um, and I was like, okay, it was perfect, completely perfect. Now again, because I treat my speakers as pairs. Um, if I put two and a half dB on this speaker, I'm putting two and a half dB on this other speaker as well, because I, I know they're outputting the same thing. They're in a symmetrical room. 
Um, there could be some differences, but I like to keep my speakers output and exactly the same thing from one side to the other because I can hear the differences. Um, I want them to be equal. So again, two and a half dB here, two and a half dB here, there. Now we get onto the back surrounds. The the sound will move into the back surround. And once we get into the back surround area, I was like, yeah, this, the sound's gone again. I was like, it's too low. It's way too low. So I kept on uh, going from one speaker, the uh, the back right surround, to, uh, oh, sorry, not the back right. I keep calling it that. I'm sorry. The back the surround right <laughs> God. to to this channel uh, to these channels and I made sure I kept listening and listening and rewinding and again it's about the same thing this one though was about 2 dB so the difference wasn't anywhere near as loud um, as this and again I think it might be because of this angle right whereas these uh, these two two speakers here are at the back are essentially directly facing me uh, pretty much um, whereas these are the you know these are on an angle so the the, the angle might be um, you know just just slightly different um, but yeah the, the the increase in volume wasn't as much I was like okay that's interesting and again so I, I applied this uh, 1 DB or one and a half DB maybe even 2 DB um, extra on this speaker so I just applied it to this one because I knew they were I went I knew they were balanced anyway um, and I did that then so then what I did is I started all over again I was like all right I think I've got the base the base uh, level done correct and I just listened I don't, I don't close my eyes and do anything like that. I just absolutely focus on the sound of the volume of uh, the speaker. One thing I will say uh, as well is um, you may have to learn this over the years or just kind of intuitively uh, get this, but you have to try and understand the difference between the tonal tonality of a speaker and volume right because each one of the speakers even though they are the same they have a slight potentially tonal difference going around um, you know just very micro minor things um, even the placement of the speakers you know um, and things like that they're different maybe different reflections and things like that but the volume itself, I'm just focusing on the volume itself, not the tonal, any potential tonal differences. Um, so I, I definitely think you should look out for that, is try and just hear the volume itself and not the tonality of the speaker. So yeah, volume differences all the way around here and all the way back. Now this is a good one as well from this point here because we're going up to what I call my reference point, which is my left speaker. So if I've gotten this speaker right, has is this speaker right compared to this speaker? And it was. So again, I, I'm treating everything as a pair, these pair this paired system. And it does work. So, um, my last piece of advice, I guess you could say, um, for getting the volume of the surrounds and everything behind you correct, is if anything, uh, you can be a pinch louder on the surrounds, I think. Uh, half a dB, you know, you can be. If this goes around and you're like, all right, I, I I can tell it is just slightly louder. For me, that's fine, right? Um, because in a movie, uh, intelligibility of where 
absolute sounds absolute sounds are is um, it's still sometimes kind of difficult um, so just having that little pinch of uh, extra surround I don't mind that you know but you can go a absolute you know hear the sound move around you I want the I want absolute 100% accuracy then do that you know it, it however you want to however you want to enjoy surround sound is really up to you so yeah uh, but for me I I spend a lot of time on this um, because I need to know my base layer is correct and um, once I know the base layer is correct it really is easy from there then on in I find um, so next uh, yeah next week next we go on to the top layer which is uh, all of the Atmos height channels only. Now, um, <clears throat> obviously, th right now, um, we're going to get into this, but right now, this does not account for any differences in volume between the bottom base layer to the top, right? But don't worry about that. Don't worry about that yet. That's completely fine. We uh, will get there. Right now, we're just making sure that the front Atmos speakers, when a sound moves around, is the same all around us, right? So again, my biggest thing here is a sound now is coming uh, from the front to the rear where my, again, my our ears are pointing forward, really. They're, they're forward facing. Is there going to be any differences in volume? And there were, right? Uh, I think it was about one, one to one and a half dBs difference between the front and the rear until I got this to where the sound moving around was completely you you couldn't tell that it was coming from a different speaker you know it was perfect volume the entire way around Again, this is another big, a big one, like the like the bass layer, is we're now coming up to something where the sound will be in front of us from the from the back. How does that transition? How does that? How do you hear that going to the front? Uh, again, I I I, get, I mean I do spend quite a little uh, bit of time on this as well because um, I've in the past I've always felt as I've struggled with hearing. Um, rear high Atmos sound compared to say the fronts which I found easy to hear so I, I definitely want to make sure you get this right and again if anything you could lean just ever so slightly half a dB on the rears and I wouldn't have any anything bad to say about that you know it um, depending on again when you're sitting in your, on your couch um, things like that having it slightly louder I mean, again, only about half a dB or so um, means you can kind of relax and sit any way you want on the couch and it doesn't really matter, you know, things like that. Um, but, you know, again, do do what is best for you. So, yeah, that goes around. Uh, same thing. So, th so far, this is really good. But, um, so, there are there are some others. Um, bass and top layer, um, things like that, where the sound comes, say, from the top and comes down and then goes to the uh, goes back to the top. This is fine. Um, it's just there's certain things, um, even back on, back with the Joe and Tell and um, Techno Dad uh, disc. There's just certain things I need to know, right? And some of this, some of this, I just didn't need. Um, top front to top rear right, um, yeah, just things like this. I did. I was like, I I listened to them. They didn't provide me with um, any information that I really wanted. 
Um, but then I found this front left to surround uh, to surround rear, and uh, I played this, and this is what this one does. This is everything I need. Uh, and, uh, So, it's starting in left, uh, the left base channel. I was like, all right, we're off to a good start. Then the sound rises to the uh, left, upper left Atmos channel. And again, this is great. This is all I need, all right? This is, these type of tones is all I need because I now, now I've got my top, uh, I've got my bass layer, correct? and I've got my tops balanced all the way around, but now I need to see, now I need to know the difference between the bass and the height. This test tone provides it, and this is really all I need now. So, So it, it, it rises up, it gets to the top, and then comes through the middle of the room. So I went through this again two, three time, two or three different times. The sound from this speaker volume must be the same uh, raised the entire way up, and it wasn't. It was half a dB to one dB is difference. And again, I, I play this again and again and again and again until I hear a sound that is from this speaker to that speaker exactly the same volume. Now, I don't know why, that I, th I just think there's more nuances and precision with the human ear than a measuring device. Um, you can buy the best microphone in the world, but it is still not how we hear. That is not how we hear sound. So, the first method of getting all your speakers, um, say, the correct levels, then measuring in the main listening position, yes, they're needed because it gives you, um, it, um, it's a good target to go after, right? But you now have to do your listening tests. And again, I've only been able to do the listening tests this year, which is 2023. I've only been able to do this this year. And having um, things like this is, are just extremely, it, it, it changes the entire system because how would I have known before that the difference between my base layer and the top layer was 1 dB, you know, half a dB, 1 dB? Um, there's no real way to test that apart from a test tone, which again is slightly inferior um, than, than using your ears, I think. So now it comes through the middle of the room. Now again, at some point, at some point here, we are going to be, because we're now at the, the, the top of the room, is the transition between this speaker, because I've now made these changes, um, low on the backs. And it was, it was low on the backs. So what I did was, is again, I, I kind of, now everything was balanced. I've treated the rears again as a pair and almost like this, this system, this Atmos system now as a, almost like a cohesive unit. Um, whatever I applied here, which was 1 dB, I just applied it to every single Atmos speaker, right? So then we, uh, we played this again, it come through. I felt the volume was good. I may, I may have put half a dB on the top channel. Um, I may have done that, an extra dB, uh, including these front changes applied to the backs and then a half a dB as well. Now the speaker comes down, or the, the sound comes down. Now um, from a diagram point of view, this is going to the rear surrounds, this sound. It's not going to the uh, surround sound left and right speakers, it's going to the backs. I had to make sure it, what it was doing was that um, because um, I had to get up. 
I made sure I followed the sound. <laughs> I was like, literally following the sound because uh, I wanted to make sure what, what speakers it was using uh, when it when it did this. So I knew what speakers to adjust. You know, I could have been adjusting the wrong speakers here. So now it's coming down. And now we're now we're in the back surround uh, right speaker, and here was half a dB low as well. So again, this transition now between the front and now the surround. I did. I just. I think I did it again about three three different times, uh, slowly making minor increment incremental changes. But this sound going across here was 100% the same volume the entire way down. Completely perfect. Like, absolutely perfect. I can't achieve this without this disc. Can't do it. And it, you, you know, I've been, over the years, making all these things, these, like, do I just add two and a half dB at the rears? Do I do this? I, I can't. I, I had no way to test this before. You can now with this disc. Um, and for me, the panning portions of this disc and Joe and Tell's uh, disc as well, Technodad's disc, they're the best portions of it. They really are. They're, they're absolutely amazing. Uh, they are a complete game changer. I'm telling you now. Um, I I demoed a few movies after this, uh, getting this right. Never heard it. Never, never, never heard it. The sound this good. And I've I've been living here for two, two and a half years now. Um, you know, there's the, there's always improvements to be had, even with the um, the speakers that you've had now for you know two and a half, three years or so. Uh, it just continues to get better and better, and it's just quite simply just from calibration work so uh, yeah so that was the front to the right surround and luckily well not luckily but thank thankfully you can do the same again um, with the other side so um, this side was much easier because again I'm treating things in a pair so everything that all the changes that I applied um, to the rear, uh, the top Atmos, the rear Atmos, I applied to this side as well because I treated them as a pair, and the backs around here, I treat them as a pair, so I made those those changes. I listened to this one, that went over, it was completely perfect, it was done, and it was done. This one I, I did, I, I didn't even need to run again, uh, because again, because because everything's set up in a volume in that volume way from the very start, um, it matches the sides perfectly in volume. So um, this one just went over. I listened to it; it sounded absolutely perfect. So, um, yeah, I mean, never, never have I heard surround sound like this. Um, it's it's incredible, and this is all about. This is all about channel levels, right? Um, for years now, we should all been getting channel levels correct, right? Set everything to 75 dB and hey, everything's perfect. But hey, my surround sound is not loud enough. It just doesn't, it doesn't, you know, everyone says how good Dolby Atmos is. Everyone says how good um, the surround sound is on this disc, but hey, I don't hear it. It can, it, it can be how you hear sound uh, with your couch, the height of your cushions, just there's a lot of factors involved. Um, hearing sounds at the front are easier for our ears to hear than them being behind as well. So again, this um, having access to stuff like this is, um, like I said, I think it's a game changer. So uh, there are some other things on the disc, uh, rattle tests, and um, yeah, these are. These are sweeps, and I have a rattle at around 157 hertz because uh, I played this really quick. Uh, I'm not getting any issues in the low end. 
Uh, I'm not getting any rattles or nothing like that, so that's good. But yeah, around 157. Uh, I think it's the speaker, though. So it, it may need, like, I don't know, padding out or... Um, I don't want to put anything in the back of that uh, air pocket of the woofer because that actually changes the EQ of the speaker significantly um, and reduces the load um, as well on the speaker. Like you just can't produce the bass if you like stuff the back port uh, with anything like that. But yeah, I think it's the speaker. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check. But I don't like things that rattle in my room. I hate that. Um, but you know, you, you have this, uh, which is good. And uh, what else? Uh, we have the AV sync. Now this disc is much better than the first disc. Uh, because you have um, different sync, you can change the sync for like different uh, frame rates. And um, hmm, now this would actually have been better. I th now they have HD and Ultra HD. Hmm. Now I don't know if they have Dolby Vision on this disc. Uh, I would actually have to check. Um, yeah. If you're watching this uh, on YouTube, let me know um, because I've noticed um, that this, there, there are sync uh, issues between uh, on TVs between HDR10 and Dolby Vision. There, there can be slight, um, you know, changes there. I have found anyone that's got an OLED, because um, I think the sync, um, the uh, the the uh, yeah the the sync of the the TV right with sound and things like that, I think they're all a, a, around the same. Um, they might be get beginning better from as the years go on. I have an LG C9 and it's around 12 to 13 milliseconds. Um, the delay um, that I put on the sound on my receiver to the TV, um, 12 to 13. I I, I can't even remember exactly what it is. It's around there. Um, and that to me is what looks and sounds uh, exactly correct so um, but they did change they've got the different resolutions here so um, which is actually good because um, I found that the, the difference between HD doing it in HD which is 1080p and 4k is is actually different as well which is kind of annoying so uh, you have to like kind of pick and choose because I don't have the the ability to change the sync based on uh, the frame rate that I'm getting in. Maybe some processors do, and the resolution and and everything. You have that type of granular control over each frame rate and resolution and things like that. I on a Denon you don't have that, um, so. Uh, I'd, I'd tr just try and get the 23 frames, uh, which it weighs 24 frames per second, uh, correct. And that's uh, that's really what I what I do there. So, okay, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> well, that is the end of it. Um, now, maybe let's go quickly go over things. All right. So, yeah, we have um, the near field, right? I just want to go over things really, really quickly now at the end. Um, so I measure everything near field. I make sure that is in the. Um, uh, I'm assuming all receivers have this. Like they have um, a global section um, where they can. You can input all of your um, measurements there, um, plus or minus. You know, all, all of this type of stuff. So I make sure all my speakers are outputting the same thing. And the, again, the reason is it, it allows me to now control speakers as pairs. If I make one cha cha a change to one, I can make it to the other and know in my mind that the volume is going to be exactly the same from the both speakers. So that's really good. Um, just be aware of the differences between the layouts. Um, the receivers should be adding the correct volume based on the positioning of, the, of your layout. Um, Yeah, how you measure sound um, with uh, the with it pointing up. Um, for the most part, because of the last tests with the panning tests, 
I wouldn't get too crazy on this. If you want to, you can. I do because you know it's something I like to do. I like to <laughs> I like to really overdo things. Um, you know, um, I need to. I just need to know, right? I need to know that this is a when I get this as a 90 degree angle, exactly what's happening. I need to measure it. You know, it's just it's just something I really enjoy. Um, things like that. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn this into a big deal at all. Now knowing that we have the panning tests, right? Get everything to 75 dB, right? W measured 75 dB. Everything now measured 75 dB. The subwoofer measures 75 dB. Don't go too crazy on it. But now do the panning tests and the listening tests, right? Um, so yeah, very, very, very simple. Um, the um, this base layer thing as well. Uh, let me pause this. Um, make sure it's the same volume the entire way around. Now, now with your listening tests, you know, put your cushions back. Um, what is really going on with your with your room? Uh, do all of the does every single speaker behind you need a plus three dB increase? And ev and then you run this test, and yeah, that sounds that sounds now that sounds good, right? But this must be the same volume the entire way around, right? And this the base level one, make sure that's correct. Uh, really get that correct. Um, the height ones too. Uh, this when it comes around you, again anything anything behind you, make sure that is correct. Um, and uh, yeah, the, this is again, this is really cool. This uh, front left to right surround rear, excellent, excellent test. This is uh, is the volume between the, the the base layer the same going up to the heights? Do you need half a dB? Do you need one dB? But make sure that that transition there, everything sounds the same. And again, going across the middle to, towards the back, the back heights now, it needs to be the same volume. Get it the same volume. Make sure you're hearing that, um, that volume. And then coming down, you know, is it the same? I made sure it was absolute on both, obviously on both sides, because I'm treating them as a pair, but, um, you know, I'm, uh, I, I just made sure that that was, that was done right. So, yeah, um, at first I thought there isn't going to be enough, because uh, this is relatively simple compared to, um, you know, Technodad and Joe and, Joe and Tails disc. Uh, they've got thousands of, of uh, test tones on there. I mean, they, they go nuts uh, on theirs. Um, and do, do you need them? Um, in some cases you may, there might be something where you're like, Hey, I just, this isn't quite right. And this disc can really, can really get you there. This disc as well has pairs, um, where you can, uh, you could do the, um, Front, uh, front right Atmos with the rear, um, the rear Atmos, the rear right, you know, and you can hear where, where is, the, when both are played together, in your ears, where is the sound? Um, you know, is it in the middle of the room or is it, do you hear more of the front? Oh, well, the, now I can tell that the rear actually does need picking up a little and now it sounds you know, both of them play and that's where the sound should be and, you know, so that there's a lot to uh, both of these discs. However, um, with the Spears and Munsell disc, uh, because of this, um, this up and over um, and then back to the surrounds, that alone uh, clinched it for me. I was, this is, this is pretty much all I need with, um, you know, them going around and then the, the bass layer going around. You know, and then having this as well, so I can hear the difference between the base layer and the top layer, and then how it goes down. I didn't, I didn't, I don't feel as though I need any more than this. So, 
this provided me everything I needed. Um, and like I said, I did some uh, tests. Um, my big one, there's two discs that I go to right away. Um, if anyone knows uh, me, they probably should know already. Uh, one is the Batman, is the uh, car chase scene in the Batman. The biggest thing uh, with that one is obviously right at the end where he floors it and um, he jumps over and uh, there's a massive explosion and he just charges his car into like the penguins uh, a, a car, flips his car over, right? Um, that's some of the best Dolby Atmos um, I've ever heard. Um, it's just tremendous. The car's literally spinning around and all around you. And it, again, it's never sounded uh, this good or precise before. And it's because what I've heard with these uh, test tones, the sound is just, it, it's perfect volume. The entire, if something goes over you, it's, the perf it's perfect all the time. Uh, the next demo is Dune. Um, it's where Paul gets blasted by a sandstorm. All of the sound um, drops out, and all you hear is the sand particles around you. Now, I have never, ever heard it this good before. And um, how long's the disc been out? A year, year and a half? Actually, yeah. It's actually been a year and a half, I think, that movie's been out. Because uh, it was the start of 2022, that disc was released, um, and I can safely say I've never. It took me till mid 2023 to hear that movie exactly as it should be, um, just com balance completely well. You hear voices, you hear voices traveling through space. I can, I, you can almost see them as they as they move around you. There's sand particles literally moving through the room. They actually come through you, through the seat, and then back up and around. Um, that is the best Atmos disc I've ever heard for um, pinpoint accuracy of moving sounds around. Um, now, a movie like um, Avatar, The Way of Water, it doesn't have that um, speaker precision of sound like Dune does and in some ways um, the Batman does, but it has a more grand sound uh, to it where uh, music is amplified and supported with the, the surrounds, things like that. It's a big sound um, and I also appreciate that type of sound. So. Uh, when um, one of the birds or whatever they're flying on, uh, whenever they fly through the screen, it, it, it you can f you know you can feel it fl fly through the screen, and um, yeah, it's just amazing because I watched um, I watched that movie without this calibration. Uh, I watched the Avatar Way of Water without this calibration once. Then, um, and I thought, well, I think the surrounds are actually a little low. I'm like, there's not much action in the surrounds, um, to be honest. Not a lot of it is at, at the front. So I ran this disc. I, um, you know, I measured everything, uh, and I did it with this new way of actually doing a near field measurement first and getting a good base level uh, for the speakers uh, done. Uh, did all of this, and then we essentially we rewatched the movie um, on a Sunday. Um, I think about a week or two ago, um, a week ago now, and um, it just sounded absolutely amazing. So, yeah, it's not just about getting your speakers to 75 dB, and uh, that's it. It's not uh, the listening tests. Um, I w I would say. Uh, again, you, you get 90% of the way there, maybe, with um, setting things to 75 dB. Um, but I don't think you're done yet. You know, there's uh, there's much more you can do. And uh, these pa the panning, this panning section is, is gold. Um, it's a game changer for proper surround sound volume. 
you can achieve proper surround sound volume with this disc. Um, it's amazing. It really is. And uh, most movies I've been watching now, um, it, it surrounds that sound just sounds excellent. Again, because it's balanced right. Uh, music as well. Um, I've got the Beatles album, Dolby Atmos. Um, some of the other Beatle members, um, they've got um, theirs as well in uh, Dolby Atmos. Sounds tremendous. Uh, obviously the bass. The bass for me, you know, having that 76, I measured 76 dB, just gives it that slam. Um, I like bass and uh, it just, to me, the, the whole system now just sounds excellent. Um, I'd like to maybe recalibrate my um, system uh, from an EQ point of view. Uh, maybe do that again. Um, just to... There's been a lot of updates to uh, this app. Uh, Multi-EQX app. Lots of updates. And I just kind of like, um, in my own mind, like a kind of refresher course. Because I haven't EQ'd... I haven't had to EQ my system now for over a year. And it's because I've gotten my system now to a point where I don't need to do it. I was, um, I, what I used to do is EQ every single day um, to make sure my left and right speakers were correct. Um, I've got to that point where before I've got my speakers correct and then, you know, you listen for a couple of weeks and... You know, I discuss it with the people in my house, my dad and my brother and things like that. And I'm like, I don't think this is this is right. I think we need to re-EQ. Like, I've had to do that a few times. And it's because I was like, you know, trying to learn this and like how to do it. Um, but once I got everything down, once I got the, the EQ done on, on the system and I was happy with it, I've never actually had to re-EQ my system because it just sounds amazing the way it is. So, but I've never had this balance before. And uh, you can only get this, this level of balance now with, uh, you know, Spears and Munsell and the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. Um, they're amazing. Um, it allows you to see and hear, or, and hear sounds that move from the front to the rear um, and sounds that move from the bass layer to the top layer and things like that that a microphone just um, it, it, it's just it's not inaccurate it's just the way it's measuring sound is just not the same as a human ear so um, yeah but yeah um, I'm finding so much use for this disc uh, over the last month uh, or so. You know, calibrating um, calibrating TVs, my downstairs TVs, uh, with a cell phone app and using the, the test patterns on this disc. You know, I'm just having so much fun with it. Um, didn't really get into the audio stuff for quite a while. I was like, well, let me check this, uh, this audio stuff out. I'm... Um, and I was surprised uh, how much good stuff is on this disc for it. It's really a small collection of uh, things that you can do with sound, but it has the, it really does have the, the, the important stuff. Channel trims, getting them correct. Then the demo material, you could say, is, or panning material, is how does, how does that sound now move through your system? can you tell there's volume differences in your system and you can just tighten things up they may only be small in your system it you know you might not it might not be a difference of say 2 db to the rears and things like that um it might be lighter your cushions might be different things like that but having these uh, panning things is really it's just excellent it's really changed my um, enjoyment of movies and it's just made it, movies just simply sound better. So, extremely, extremely happy with this. Um, I know this is a very, um, I don't know how long this video is now, but I'm pretty sure this is a long one. 
But look, I just wanted to, you know, uh, make a video on my experience using this disc and other discs like this. And uh, I think they're excellent. I really, this is, uh, the, the panning thing again is just incredible. So, yeah. All right, that's enough from me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Uh, if you've picked up the disc um, and you've have you done any of the tests yet? Um, have you done any calibration work for the video, um, the audio? Um, how have you used the disc? And um, are there are there anything now you, that you're gonna like look into that I've uh, I've came up with? If you have any tips yourself um, as well, please let me know. Um, Cause I'm, I'm, you with this um, level of work, like you know, calibration and um, audio calibration and things like that. You never stop learning. You know, you never get to that point where I, I at least I don't think so, that you're like, well, I've I've learned enough now. I don't need to hear what anybody else has to say. That's it. I've learned enough. I don't think you ever get to that point because you're always learning little new things that can just improve your sound next time. Again, um, it's only this year, 2023, that I can safely say that my surround sound setup is exactly as I want it to sound. Volume-wise, channel level-wise, you know, that took a long time um, to get there. Um, number one, under, trying to understand my system, and number two, actually having access to discs like this, where you can achieve this level of sound. So. Yeah, great stuff. Um, appreciate you watching. I know this was a long one. Um, hopefully you haven't fell asleep yet. And if you haven't, uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, all right. Have a good day. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.